Hello again, everybody. Welcome back. Um, I've mentioned a couple of times this week that we have kind of come to the end of various units. So we finished off, for example, yesterday, our work on statistics. We did our hot task. That means we've reached the end of the unit. We've finished all of our learning on statistics. There's only a few days left until half term. So I thought rather than wading into anything brand new now, uh, I thought we'd save that up actually and start afresh at the start of a new half term uh, on it's the 23rd. We're back. And I thought actually for the last few days of this half term, uh, we'd actually do a bit of consolidation of some of the things that we have learned already earlier in the year. Now, for all sorts of reasons, our year has been pretty disrupted actually, and I think it'd probably be quite a good idea to go back and look at one or two things again. Um, particularly as I thought it's quite a nice opportunity for us to sort of broadcast some learning into the homes of uh, you you guys at home as well, and you, we can kind of share with mum and dad some of the things that we've learned already this year. And I think this will be really useful for a couple of reasons. Firstly, so mum and dad can see what we're doing and sort of get on top of it as well. Secondly, so that you can revise things that we learned earlier in the year, um, a couple of months ago, and so that we can finish off this first half of year three, because we'll, we'll be halfway through the year on Friday, um, just by sort of going back over some of those things which we've already learned and just making sure we're still up to speed on them. So we're going to go back through, there's four days left, we're going to go through back, back through our first four maths units for one day each for the rest of the week. And the first one of those was place value. This is how we started off our year. So just pause the video here. What can you tell me about this number? That might seem like an obvious question. I'm sure you can tell me what the number is. But can you tell me anything about it and particularly anything about its place value? Pause the video there and see what you can tell me. Okay, maybe you said something to do with this. Maybe you said, right, well, it's got 100, it's got four tens, and it's got six ones. Maybe you told me uh, what some of these digits were worth. So, of course, that four is not worth four, it's worth 40. Four in the tens column is worth 40. That one, that digit one, because that's in the hundreds column, that's worth 100. So you might have started talking about that as well. So... Let's do that on the next one. What are some of these digits worth then? What's that nine worth? That's right, it's worth nine ones. What's that three worth? Three tens or 30. And what's that four worth? 400, that's right. And this is probably no more important than when we get questions like this, where if it's 555, Yes, OK, it's got the digit five used three times, but those fives are representing very, very, very different things. We've got there 500, 50 and five. And so those five digits are worth very, very, very different amounts, depending on what column they are in. So we know that the place value of our number is really important. We've looked at this not only with digits, but with practical equipment as well. So we might have had our Dean's blocks out in class, obviously. You haven't got those, so I'll just put them on the screen here. So what number is it that's represented here? What can you see and what can you tell me about it? OK, we've got the number 246, haven't we? 246. So we've got two hundreds, four tens and six ones. What about this one? OK, what number have we got? It is 162, 162. And part of the reason we've been thinking all about uh, place value is it makes mental calculations much easier and quicker to do. So if, in this case, I'm asking you to find 10 more than or 10 less than a given number, we can look particularly at the tens column, can't we? If I want you to find 10 more than 741, you don't need to get your fingers out and start counting. You can actually just adjust that tens column, can't you? I want you to find 10 more than this number. So if you're finding 10 more than 741, we know really it's only our tens column which is going to change. It's not going to be our ones, it's unlikely to be our hundreds. So it's the tens column which is going to change it did have four tens we're adding on an extra 10 so it's going to change to 751 and if it was 10 less than same again we know it's going to be our tens column which is changing 
what's that missing digit going to be if we're finding 10 less than? It's going to be a three, isn't it? Or a 30. So it's going to be 731. Can you pause the video now and find me 10 less than and 10 more than each of these other numbers? Okay, I'll go through these now quickly. So we've got 549, 569, 244, 264, 619, 639, 457, 477, 624, 644. And we can do the same thing with hundreds, can't we? If I wanted you to find 100 less than and 100 more than these numbers, again, this is going to be really straightforward. We don't need to go sort of starting adding on in any funny ways. We don't need to use column addition for this. We can use a mental strategy because we know that 100 more is going to be affecting the hundreds column. We can just look at the, that digit in the hundreds column and adjust that. So if I wanted to find 100 less than this number, I know it's going to be something and 10, because I know my 10s column and my 1s column are not going to be affected. It's going to be 310, and it's going to be 510 if I want to find 100 more than. So again, can you pause the video and do that for the remaining five as well? OK, so we've got 790 and 990, 440 and 640, 190 and 390, 570 and 770, 730 and 930. That's a useful strategy we can use. Okay, so another quick bit of revision. We have looked at this symbol, sometimes shown the other way as well. And we know that this symbol is greater than or less than. Now, I wonder if you can remember that way that I've told you how to remember this. What does this look like, our greater than and less than symbol? The thing I, the thing I always say in class is, if we think of it a bit like a crocodile mouth, the crocodile mouth always wants to eat the bigger meal. It's hungry, it wants the biggest meal possible. I think of this as like a little crocodile mouth. I sometimes even draw the teeth on, just to remind us. Now we can draw this either way around. I hopefully get the idea there, I'm not gonna draw the teeth. Uh, or maybe I'm. So you can draw this either way around and that crocodile mouth is wanting to eat the bigger meal. So it's gonna be pointing that way if the bigger meal is that side, or it's gonna be pointing that way if the bigger meal is that side. So, so let's see how this is gonna look in practice then. So in fact, can you pause the video and have a go at writing these ones down? So use your place value knowledge and show me which one is greater than and which one is less than in each pair. Okay, hopefully you've done that. Let's go for it together now. So our crocodile wants to eat the bigger meal. So the mouth would be opening up in the direction of 164. Although it's got the same digits, of course, it's worth more in the tens column than it is in the ones column. The same again here, our crocodile wants to eat our bigger meal. Jump, jump. Uh, over here again. And this one is just showing, of course, that even though these digits are much larger, and nine and nine add way more, add up to way more than these ones, the fact that this has a, hundred di a hundreds column and it's got a digit in the hundreds column and 99 doesn't, of course, means that one is bigger. So our crocodile there wants to eat that larger meal on that side. Okay, bit of problem solving for you now. And you've got six questions here. And each one has three digits and three columns, hundreds, tens, and ones. And you need to place the digits in the right order to fit the criteria for each question. I'll show you what I mean for the first one. So it says, you need to create a number that is between 161 and 182 using the digits six, one, and seven. So you can put that six, one, and seven in any order you want, as long as you're create, creating a number between 161 and 182. Now there's a little bonus problem solving for you here. Which questions here have more than one possible answer? Pause that video 
and give that a go then see which ones you can come up with oh okay I need to do some stuff right so over here we've got a couple of possible answers we could have 167 or we could have 176 sorry I know that doesn't quite fit into the uh, boxes there so like over here we've got uh, two something between 295 and 211 we could have 298 over here it's going to have to start with a three it's going to be three eight nine over here we've got 362 and then we've got 600 oh sorry not 600 576 and over here we've got this one a couple we've got 789 or 798 okay so that's just been a real whistle stop tour of what we spent actually probably a couple of weeks thinking about right back at the start of the year in september it's like a very different time doesn't it september 2020 more crikey uh so i want you now then in time honored tradition to go through the next few slides pause along each one uh, have a go at some questions yourself we've got the answers at the end of the video when you're ready Okay, here are your answers then. So I'll leave these on the next few slides while I'm talking through it. So place value was the one that we looked at today and that was our first unit of the year. Tomorrow, we're gonna to come back and we're gonna be learning all about addition and subtraction. So that was our second unit of the year. So we're just gonna spend these last couple of days before half term recapping some of these uh, units which we've already looked at and just making sure we're still feeling really good about them still knowing what we're doing and hopefully kind of fill you guys in at home mums dads and people helping you hopefully fill them in a little bit about some of the things we've learned this year as well okay thanks everybody well done for today's maths lesson i will see you back later on for spellings